Well, hello guys. Welcome back to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler, and today we are going to be doing a review of the Damn Designs Oni. Alright guys, so this is the Damn Designs Oni. First and foremost, this was lent into the channel by Steve, or Captain Steve, so thank you sir. Very much appreciated, and this is a very unique knife that I probably wouldn't have had a chance to otherwise look at, so thank you. So, to start off with, obviously he has a lanyard here, so there is a lanyard hole. We have some barrel spacers going on there, and some really nice titanium with some... It's, this is less of chamfering. This is more of like a scalloping going all the way the length. It's kind of like a, a very gradual chamfer. We have some chamfering going on here and all the way around the backside. Everything is knocked down super nice. A captive pivot, which this has the same shape right here as the other side captive pivot, but this will obviously come out. And that's really cool because I kept it uniform. It is flush with the scale so you don't feel it, and that's just... I don't know, I, 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 there's a lot of little design, like little choices in this that you can tell are intentional and very cool. So we have a titanium pocket clip here, which is not ambidextrous, but you can take it off and, it, you know, just take it off and carry it like this. Uh, I know you can do that with any knife, but this one more so, it, it's going to look less obtrusive because it's going to go into the barrel spacer right there, and you're not going to have anything missing. It's going to look just like you had no pocket clip. Here we have an over travel stop with the bearing, or with the uh, ball detent right there. It's inside here. And then inside these scales, we have, see, there you go, some milling. Pretty cool. They, even milled the inside of these scales, and I appreciate that. There's just a lot going on with this. And even on the liner lock side, they did mill on the back side there. So, there's, like I said, they paid a lot of attention to detail, and then you get to this weird but really cool looking blade. I didn't mention there's jimping on the liner right here. It's not actually aggressive. I can barely feel it, but my thumb's kind of calloused. Then you get to this Tonto style blade. This does have a sharpening choil right here, and the sharpening choil is done really well because where the plunge grind stops at the top part is where the blade starts. So you're not going to get that little growth of metal right there when you're sharpening. sharpening. We have a finger, finger opening hole right there that does work, and I'll demonstrate the action in a second. But the really cool part is, is take a look at this. They knock down the edges of the hole. Now if you go and you look at a Spyderco, any Spyderco, take your choice, they're sharp edges. I mean, I... I think I had one where I knocked down the edges on one. I was like, this is annoying. So, again, really, really cool choices here. Some really large jimping on the back of the spine into this harpoon style with a swedge going down here into the tanto shape. It's a really interesting shape of a blade too, right? It's pretty unique, and I threw a lot at it for a little space. And, and you know, it's. I think it's not too much, but it's almost just enough. So let's get into, this is an S35BN blade, by the way. Yeah, let's just show you guys this real quick. Very clean looking blade here. Just very, very clean. This landing zone right here is awesome. It, your thumb fits in so well. Unfortunately, this is pretty much a two finger knife unless you choke up right here, which really isn't a choke up point, but it works just fine to hold it like this. Now, if you're doing any kind of draw cuts, you're not going to really want to do that. It's kind of like, I don't know that you're going to be doing any heavy tasks with this guy because it's kind of small. But, like I said, it's about a two-finger knife until you choke up here. This is on bearings, and you can thumb flip or front flip it, or you can reverse flick it. You can probably also thumb flip it, but it's just so tiny, it's not comfortable to get into and because they knock down those edges it actually makes it harder for your thumb to get a grip uh reverse flicking is not an issue though Let's see can i over the top flip it yeah not really it's just you have nowhere to grab onto but the th but the but the front flip works so good and it gets it has this snap because it's so small 
you really get a grip bam, on there. And yeah, it's going to wear on your thumb a little bit, but then you get a switch to the freaking reverse flick and stop complaining, right? Let's get you guys some specs on this little guy here. First, let's start off with the weight. Uh, it's going to be a little off because of the lanyard. I'm going to try to hold up the lanyard here. Um, coming in at about 2.75. I just I was throwing it off and it wasn't studying out. All right. So the overall length of this guy is coming in at a whopping, I don't know if I have enough freaking tape measure to do this, a whopping shy of five inches. This thing is less than five inches long. The blade length is almost right at two inches, but the cutting edge is coming in at about one and three quarters. So you're not getting much room to work. But this, I mean, this knife doesn't strike me as a knife that you're going to be like, I'm going to take this out and just knock down boxes with it. And you might be able to make one or two cuts with the boxes because this actually is really comfortable for the landing zone. But eventually, this just isn't one of those types of knives, right? All right. I was going to get you guys some size comparisons, but we forgot to do all the other stuff. All right. So the overall blade stock's coming in at about 120 thousandths. The behind the edge of the straight part of the Tonto is coming in right at about 20, 25 thousandths. And then the behind the edge of the upper part is coming in at 22 thousandths. Let me make sure I hit this side. This side feels less. Yeah, so the belly's a little bit doesn't make much sense to me. All right, so 22 thousandths. I was holding it at an angle. That's why these measurements are hard to get. All right, so the Tonto tip is coming in about two or three thousandths thicker. It's not really significant, but the idea is there to give a little bit more strength to the tip of that blade. I'm going to be really careful. I don't want to scratch this stuff here with my guy that's not open. So the overall thickness is coming in at a 0.51, which is really cool because it's so small, but that thickness actually allows you to have some, honestly, holding it like this, or even like this doesn't bother me too much. Obviously, this is a hot spot right here, but this really doesn't bother me too much. So I could probably do one or two push cuts and like be like, all right, we're good here. So the overall height in your pocket coming in at a whopping 1.28. Again, I'm not trying to tighten it too hard because I don't want to scratch this titanium. Coming in at a 1.8. So it's actually kind of like a pocket like chode, right? Like it's it's... It's thick, it's fat, <clears throat> it's kind of tall in your pocket. So, yeah, it's small. And to me, this strikes me more as like a keychain style knife or like a carabiner style knife other than your pocket knife because it's going to be, it doesn't distribute right. So when you have it in your pocket, this is your pocket. It's going to be here, but it's also going to be kind of fat, right? Here, let's do it like this. It's going to be kind of fat. So it's going to be pushing and it's small whereas a bigger knife is going to push more evenly now i know that doesn't make sense but once you kind of carry it that's that's kind of what it is and, and steve feel free to jump in here if you've noticed that uh it's just something i noticed while i was carrying it i did not take this to work but i did carry this around the house with me all right let's get you guys some size comparisons so here is your feldspar and your mini feldspar obviously right do i need to say anything about this do I need to go, this is obviously smaller than the other ones? Probably not. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe we should just stick to a routine, you know? Your rats. Let's get to your Cervivi sandwich. That, 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 that. Your Cervivi brazen and drop point. Cool, cool freaking knife. And your Cervivi elementum. And last but not least, we have your Spyderco PM2 and your Spyderco Little Native. Little Native is a really good comparison for it. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, by really good, I mean it's probably the closest size that I got. I don't know where my... Let me see if I got my launch. Let's head over here because I did do an unboxing today. So here's your Kershaw Launch 10. It's the exact same size as your Launch 10 in life. Now this has much more presence because it's bigger, it's got a bigger blade, but it's the length is the exact same size. Okay, so to recap, we got a captive pivot here, which is really cool because it's sitting flush here, and that's a cool design. They, they got these to sit flush, and they made them match. All you have to do is just, it's the same concept, but whatever. Titanium here with some chamfering all around the edges here, some jimping on the frame lock right here, and there is milled, or milled scales. It's great. That's I think that's really, really cool. We have a titanium pocket clip here, a lanyard hole, and then two barrel spacers going on there. A little plus sign there, which I think just is a design. I don't know that that's really functional at all. It might be functional for this, like when this comes off, it looks similar. Um, that that might be the idea. We have some scalloping. It's like a it's like a like a, a very shallow, long freaking uh, uh, chamfering on the edge right here. Sorry, I struggled there, uh, but I'm gonna call it scalloping because it just looks like one big you know finger slot. Chamfering around the edges right here. A really large landing zone behind this harpoon style blade with some really, really aggressive jimping. We have, the, and by the way, this is knocked down on the sides. This is knocked down. This is knocked down. This is knocked down. The sharpening choil is knocked down. So they took the time on all these freaking details to knock all this stuff down. And it's just, I, I think it's really cool. A swedge that goes out to here and then into your Tonto. This is a S35VN blade and it is riding on bearings. The action is pretty darn good. So, what do I... I, I didn't tell you the price. The price is about 100 bucks, I think. They don't sell this design on their on their uh, cha channel website anymore. They have a design called the Jin, with D-J-I-N-N. -N. It is the same exact design, but it has a drop point. That is going for it with the titanium, and they call it the same thing. They, they literally say the Jin is the Oni's brother, but it just has a drop point. This has a Tonto. So the Jin is coming in at $100 for the S35 and the Titanium, while the G10 and D2 is coming for $40. Bucks. Um, didn't really look at the G10 models that much. I was just trying to get a feel if they had any extra, you know, things that they wanted to really add to, you know, the review, so I didn't miss out on anything. Uh, but I could not find them anywhere else. I mean, they might be selling in other places, but I didn't really see them anywhere else. So you might just have to go to their website to order them. But 100 bucks for Titanium S35VN and all these details that they really look into, I think the price point is really, really good. Um, I mean, just look at uh, the Spyderco Little Native. You're getting S30V instead of S35, G10, and stainless steel, right? I mean, it, it, yeah, you get it. It's slightly different. It's Spyderco versus Damn Designs. But, I mean, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck here. And the tolerances and everything just feels really good. There's no back and forth. No up and down. Coming down here, we're perfectly we're perfectly centered. There's no detent rock. I mean, this thing is, I mean, they just took time with it. And I appreciate that. That's one of my likes. I like how they took time with everything that this did. And... You're just looking at it and you're saying, they looked at that. Oh, you could tell they made that decision. They made this decision. And for 100 bucks, you don't get that that often. So that's cool. Another thing I like, I do like the action. I think that I like that they added a finger hole right here for when your <laughs> fingers get tired of this really tough jimping. But something satisfying about the jimping up here, you can snap this son of a gun out. So bam, what's up? What's up? And then they see a little knife and they're like, hey, what are you doing with that? But point here being, I love the action, and it's it's a very fidgety little guy. And then last, I kind of just talked about it, is the landing zone here. I think it looks cool. It's very functional. And for being so small, you do get a little bit more choices than one would expect on a four and three quarter inch long knife, right? You get a lot more choices. I mean, I could choke up here. I can hold it here. I think I can hold it here. I can kind of hold it here. And I, I don't know. I just think that's cool. What don't I like? Uh, kind of the converse of that. I just, the size, guys. I You guys know me. I mean, I just got this in today. It's going to be posting. But this is the Riot Epoch, right? Um, this is my damn near perfect 
perfect size. This is the knife that I like to carry. Not the knife. I mean, it will be. But this is one of the, this is the perfect size of the knife that I like to carry. Um, so when I get to something small like this, I really just don't buy in as much just because I know there's no part of me that's ever going to carry this religiously short of my Kershaw Launch 10. I mean, this has a little bit of sentimental value, but this is also kind of one of those knives that I wouldn't mind beating the hell out of. And I just, yeah, I, you know, this is going to be my only tiny little knife though, but it serves its channel or purpose on the channel because it's an unboxing knife as well. Something like this, I think you have to like that smaller breed of knife or something about this speaks to you. I kind of spawned all that rant off of the fact that it's a small knife. Uh, and that's kind of where it's at. It's just a, really a preference, right? Overall, very cool design. Very recommendable for, recommendable for $100. And thank you, Steve, for lending it into the channel. That was super cool of you. I think it's awesome. He also lent in the Dessert Warrior, which I'm not going to review, by the way. I already reviewed the Boker Kalashnikov, and I'm just not going to do the Dessert Warrior with it. Uh, I'll talk with you on the side about that, Steve. He lent in the flat iron, and he also lent in the Kershaw Mixtape. So thank you for sending those in, man. I genuinely appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's just really cool when people do that. So thank you guys again. My name is Tyler. This is Everyday EDC. This is the Damn Designs Oni. You cannot purchase this right now, but you can purchase the Gin, which is the same exact knife and drop point. My name is Tyler. This is Everyday EDC. I might have said all this already. This is freaking deja vu. Have a great day. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. This is my Patreon. This is my Instagram, Everyday EDC underscore 77. We'll do a special shout out to all the Patreons. John K, Sammy, Eggs and Ham, Jason M, Dogtooth, Kaiba, Mickey, Wolf, and Captain Steve. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great freaking day.